gonna tell you, you're gonna have, want to settle down because it was a, it was a very big day for those of us who follow the adventures of this ridiculous person known as Donald Trump today. The <laughs> bigly anticipated new book about him, Confidence Man, written by Maggie Haberman of the New York Times, came out. And if you thought there wasn't any more all to tell, you were incorrect. There is so much stuff. Uh, starting with uh, this is when he was five, Donald Trump. Uh, a five-year-old Donald Trump threw rocks at a baby named Dennis. <laughs> Basically the same thing he did to Mike Pence many years later. <laughs> I'll just go through these because there are so many nuggets. It's like a 300-piece family value meal. I will start with uh, Donald Trump believes gay people love him. In 2017, there was a meeting in the Oval Office. He asked the hedge fund manager, a guy named Paul Singer, he said, are you gay? And Paul Singer said, no, but my son is. And Trump followed up by telling the guy, the gays love me. And uh, <laughs> I have to, the gays love you almost as much as they love being referred to as the gays. <laughs> you know, when COVID started, they say Trump, the reason he tried to downplay it is because he thought it was making him look bad, COVID. And then he went in the bathroom and spray painted his whole face orange. That's, you know, years ago, uh, according to the book, years ago, he was on a plane with Jeffrey Epstein's gal pal, Ghislaine Maxwell. He put on the movie Bloodsport starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. They had a movie player and he had his then 13 year old son, Eric, fast forward through the dialogue to get to the fight scenes in Bloodsport. Surprising part of that story is he let Eric on the plane. But uh, <laughs> you know, when Joe Biden beat him, Trump told Rudy Giuliani to quote, do anything you have to do to get the election overturned. And Rudy went, right out and held a press conference outside a dildo store, which is... <laughs> Trump, was interview who was interviewed for this book multiple times, told Maggie Haberman um, that he wasn't watching TV on January 6th during the riots, which is the opposite of what everyone who worked there said. He wasn't watching TV, he was watching eight TV. He was like, there aren't enough TVs, bring in more television so I can take in his... <laughs> Trump often made fun of his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, so uh, we have that in common, I guess. You know, um, once <laughs> Ivanka wanted to go camping and Trump said, can you imagine Jared and his skinny ass camping? It'd be like something out of Deliverance. And then he made, <laughs> and then he made banjo noises, <laughs> which I guess is more dignified than if he started squealing like a pig, but I don't know. <laughs> we also learned that, remember when Trump was gonna, ho his brilliant plan, he had to host the Taliban at Camp David? and then he didn't go through it. Well, the book says that when they were planning the visit, he was worried Ivanka would have to wear a burqa in the presence of the Taliban, which bothered him. Inviting the people who helped Osama bin Laden, that's one thing, but nobody puts Ivanka in a burqa. <laughs> the only burqa Donald Trump wants to be around comes with a side of French fries, okay? <laughs> Trump was very focused on how the people who worked for him looked. The book said he was singularly interested in their appearance, which I guess that policy didn't apply to Don Jr. in that nest of loose pubic hair he has glued to his shin. <laughs> but he once complained that Elaine Duke, who from his Department of Homeland Security, looked like a housewife and he didn't like that. But the men at the Trump White House, only the best looking got men like Steve Bannon, Roger Stone, <laughs> Rudy Giuliani. I mean, if I don't, you'd think they were contestants on Love Island if you didn't know better. What a book this is. I have to admit, I find it very entertaining. He's not boring. He's not like Joe Biden sucking on a roll of Necco wafers going to bed at 8 o'clock. There are, he does like 10 crazy things a day. And of course, Trump's calling it all, the whole book's a lie, as he always does. And his supplicants are doing everything they can to change the subject. So Trump gets off the stage the other night after another incredible rally, thousands of people, and someone wanted him to sign a hat. They threw the hat up on the stage. He catches that. But then they threw the Sharpie, nailed it, one-handed, crushes it. Joe Biden can't bring a bicycle to a stop, but Trump can sit there after speaking to people, catch Sharpies out of the air. The only thing Joe Biden can catch is COVID. Good hands, Dad. Proud of you. Keep it up. <laughs> Also, Dad, if you um, could come pick me up, I've been in this field for two weeks, and I just, I don't know how to get home. Wow. Meanwhile, Trump's former celebrity apprentice down in Georgia had a very bad day. Herschel Walker, who's running for Senate in Georgia, calling himself a man of God, Mr. Pro-Life, Mr. Family Values, has been accused of paying 
for a former lover's abortion. A woman uh, claims he paid for her abortion in 2009. And this wasn't just a random claim. She had a check. Uh, he wrote her for $700 and a get well card to prove it. So, of course, Herschel did what people in his position do when something like this happens. He ran straight to Sean Hannity to deny, deny, deny. The woman has a receipt for an abortion. They're claiming that five days later on September 17th, you sent a $700 check and that you sent it in a get well card. Is that your signature? Uh, I haven't seen it, uh, but you know I can tell you uh, I send out so many get well, uh, send out so much of anything. <laughs> Come on, Sean, you can't expect me to keep track of all the abortion cards I've I've sent out. <laughs> I like how he says he hasn't seen it while it is on the screen right next to him. <laughs> Imagine being so stupid you write a check for an abortion you want to keep secret, and that card. If you're wondering where you can even get a card like that, you can find them right next to the dads and grads section at CBS. <laughs> Yes, they, so then Hersh, then he claims it's all a lie designed to take the voters' focus off inflation. He blames the Democrats, the media, the tooth fairy. He talks about his family values. He does the whole routine until one of his sons, a kid named Christian Walker, decides he's had about enough of this. I stayed silent as the atrocities committed against my mom were downplayed. I stayed silent when it came out that my father, Herschel Walker, had all these random kids across the country, none of whom he raised. And you know my favorite issue to talk about is father absence. Surprise, because it affected me. That's why I talk about it all the time, because it affected me. Family values people, he has four kids, four different women, wasn't in the house raising one of them. He was out having sex with other women. Do you care about family values? Eric and Don Jr. are like, holy crap, you can do that? You have no idea what me and my mom have survived. We could have ended this on day one. We haven't. I haven't told any stories. I'm just saying don't lie. Don't lie on my mom. Don't lie on me. Don't lie on the lives you've destroyed and act like you're some moral family man. Y'all should care about that, conservatives. <laughs> wow, that's... that's... Herschel, Herschel's like, oops, I should have aborted that one, too. <laughs> it's going to be a fun Thanksgiving at the Walker House. <laughs> is, all right, this is fun. This has nothing to do with politics. What you're about to see is a man on a Zoom meeting. He was in his office at home taking care of business when he was interrupted rudely and suddenly by nature. And I think for the purposes of, you know, town hall, let, let's just get in to... <laughs> Um, let's, let's, let's just get in via, via, like, go away, 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 go I, I don't know if there, someone was throwing the squirrel at him, but I want to know. So we tracked the guy down. His name's James Reich. He lives in Pittsburgh, and he's joining us now. To, so, hi, James. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Right, now, are you in the office Bye. where this happened? I'm right here in the scene of the crime. That's right, Jimmy. Oh, thank God they didn't get at your gumballs, you know? <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I actually need to refill them. I, I recognize that today. So maybe <laughs> it did. I know we don't know about it yet. So tell us what happened. Oh, <laughs> uh, the whole thing. I want to hear all of it. You got it. So it was, it's actually a great story. I mean, the night before, I couldn't have been in any better place. It was at the hospital with my, my mother-in-law, and uh, she just had a fall, and it was this horrible thing. And so I, I relieved my wife. She goes home, and, you know, I thought I was a good husband. I was going to have a nice, easy night. And I come back, uh, come back on my way home and I get a call from my wife and uh, she says, Oh my God, some, something got in your office. I think what, what got in my office? And she went in and put a piece of mail. Turns out um, we realized there was a nanny cam. I go on and look, turns out there was a rodent of some kind that got in the office. So I uh -huh. tell her, okay, well, we need animal control. We got to get animal control. So fortunately enough, I, you know, by the time I got home, we had a great guy. His name was Todd from uh, local leopard state player animal control. And uh, he came in, he cleared the area. We were up till 3 a.m. cleaning, sanitizing everything. We realized it was a squirrel. But with every confidence in the world, he said to me, hey, the flu is open. You know, the flu is open in my, in my fireplace. 
and um, the, the squirrel had to find its way in, got in somehow, and it was only probably trying to get out. A lot of things things worked out. The squirrel found its way back up the chimney, according to Todd. Okay, uh-huh. and next thing you know, next next thing we know, next thing we know, uh, and, and I was clear. I was, I was had every confidence. Next thing we know, the next day, conducting business in my office per per usual, and <laughs> I'm starting to hear noises. Ah, uh-huh. and then you realize never trust a guy named Todd. <laughs> Boy, you know, it actually brings back flashbacks. I think there might be something there. I need to think about that. So then the squirrel uh, comes in. You grab the baseball bat. We heard you scream for Julie. Who is Julie? Yeah, squirrel totally let loose. Look, Julie is our fierce nanny. She's amazing. (laughs) As it turns out, she wasn't even home. She wasn't even home. Now, let me ask you, do you have children, or is Julie there to take care of you? It's, it's probably a combination job, and uh, you know, she's already asked for hazard pay. So, yeah, we've got three great boys. So then uh, you cap- this is captured on the, the, the nanny cam or whatever, and just when you started to feel safe, it happened again. So did you put the video on TikTok? Yeah, you know, I actually left. I was heading out to the West Coast. I left the next morning, and my wife, for the first time ever, got a TikTok account, put the video on TikTok, (laughs) and, you know, the rest is kind of history because I'm here with you tonight. (laughs) And now the clip has millions of views. Has anyone recognized you go like, hey, are you the squirrel guy? Oh my gosh, I was so I was out for almost a week on the West Coast and I was on American Airlines flight back east and I woke up literally to my my scream and uh, laughter in the galley. The the flight attendants were turned on the light validating <laughs> that it was actually me sitting there in the front row. Uh, did they bring you a little packet of acorns or anything like that? <laughs> yeah, no nuts. It was the red eye. So well, now what are you gonna do? Are you planning to move out of your house or just burn it to the ground or what are you gonna do? Both those options were considered, uh, but fortunately we went into... <laughs> well... <laughs> we might now. That was well done. That was really so you're well not, done. You're that not over so it. Well done. I'm so sorry. You may have had to bleep that, Jimmy. I'm so sorry. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I don't think uh, you need to apologize, everybody James. Everybody at work's gonna have fun with this one now. <laughs> oh, all right, James. It's like real. James, I suggest psychiatry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when those squirrels smell fear, there's no telling what they might do. So clearly, you're, oh, your species. Okay. I, I tell you, that was good. Props, props. I mean, that was amazing. That yeah. was amazing. All well right. Done. Well, thank you, James. Really well you're done. a very great sport, and we appreciate your you. Uh, Check it in with us. Take care. Be careful, will you? Thank you? All right. We got a good show every night. We flew two guys 3,000 miles to go put a squirrel on that man's head. <laughs>